Good, Good evening. evening. Welcome to another edition of Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwapili Rose Amador. And together we are Native Voice TV. We are the indigenous people. Well, at the last show we told you we were going to Washington, D.C. to get an award for? For the Ethnic Media Pulitzer Award. And we came in runner-up. It's a national award. So this is a big deal because it's national. And we went to Washington, D.C., which is... Wow, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we went to the Mayflower. <laughs> well, they flew us out there. How, how ironic, huh? We went to the May Mayflower Hotel. Uh -huh. <laughs> stayed at their Mayflower. But anyways, yeah, they flew us out there. They paid for all the accommodations, uh, food, yeah. everything, lodging. It was beautiful. And we got this nice little uh, trophy. I guess yeah, it's it is. a nice little plaque. That one's see what one. Yeah. And um, we have a couple pictures from the event we'd like to show you. We saw Congressman Mike Honda there. Oh, he's a nice and, guy. Yeah. Oh, he he's was, the nicest uh, guy. Here we are with our little yeah. trophies. Oh, I was so tired there. Oh, my God. Because we're going all <laughs> oh, day. Look, how, look at you with the bow tie and everything else fancy. <laughs> I kept thinking I was a waiter. Yeah, I know. Uh, a waiter? <laughs> there's, there's Mike Honda there, a good buddy from uh, San Jose, Congressman. And there send us with... Congressman Mike Honda. Mike was one of the presenters of the awards, and um, I had the pleasure of going to breakfast with him the next day, and he took me to the... Um, McDonald's, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. He took me to the um, dining room where the Congress people have their yeah. meal, so that was nice, and he introduced me to a lot of the uh, legislators that were there. And this is all while you were at workshops. Yeah, Remember when I was in workshops? workshop, like... <laughs> Falling asleep, no. Yeah, they were very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> very interesting, especially w with the health issues, you know, the way the whole government and the whole system works in the states, and, and it's very interesting. It's like, wow, I didn't know that. So he was representing at the health workshops, and I was dining with a congressman. <laughs> so it was very nice. We, we really enjoyed the awards. Yeah, we also and, had uh, mm -hmm. the pleasure of sitting with... Um, who was uh, Claudia Mendoza from PG&E and, &E and also the ambassador from Korea. Yes, yes, he was a very nice guy. He kept yeah. thinking that we were movie stars. He yeah. asked his Isn't wife. That nice? He's like, are they movie? He, are they movie stars? Yeah. We said we had a little <laughs> sitcom going. <you> know. <laughs> it was Sunny and Sunny and Cher. <laughs> <laughs> and see what we Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then this past Saturday at the Center for Training and Careers, they had the let's see, what was it? Native American Family Technology Journey, and it was a wonderful event. There was over a hundred people there. Well, this is the first event they had, right? It's the I think second annual, second but annual? the first one at CTC, and um, they had little robots going around and walking yeah. around. The kids were programming Lego robotics, and uh, it was great. It was yeah. really nice. Good event. And uh, we snagged the keynote speaker to be here with us this evening, so we'd like to share him with you. And it's my pleasure to introduce Michael Liu of NASA in your Navajo. You're an engineer, you're an astronomer, and you have a lot of titles. So welcome to the show. Thank welcome. you for having me. I appreciate being invited here and congratulations on your award. Well, thank you. But uh, my background, as you said, many, many things that I do. Uh, I'm English, Irish, German, and Navajo, and my stepfather is Chinese, so that's my last name there. Uh, and yet, at NASA, I'm currently a system safety and mission assurance engineer. So we work with programs and projects at NASA to make sure they're conducted uh, safely and that we verify their work and make sure things are going to go smoothly on their projects. Wow. So I went from astronomy in school and then graduated, uh, got a job computer programming of all things. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, and I've been working at NASA ever since I was a high school student. So I got in their student programs and then uh, uh, junior college and college and then eventually st uh, started working for one of the contractors out there and then worked my way up into actually ended up in the wind tunnels, which is where they wow. test aircraft and, and uh, things like that. So that was kind of interesting. And then got experience as a project manager and then ended up in the system safety. But what's interesting about you know, what I do at work is that I'm also our chair of our Native American Advisory Committee, which mm -hmm. is an employee group uh, made up of the employees, and we do volunteer things. They provide uh, workshops for students and bring them on to the NASA Ames Research Center oh, for tours. Great. 
So they get to see what some of the engineers uh, do over there in a lot of different areas, you know, space science, mm -hmm. aer aeronautics, computer science, some of the more advanced robotics. And so that's kind of interesting at the event. We saw the robots there and, and the kids actually learning how to program the robots and building their own robots. And, you know, eventually, if, if they're, we're fortunate, they can uh, take that up as a career because uh, essentially the things that we send out in space are uh, robots. And so they send yeah. the probes up to land on Mars or the moon or whatnot. And mm -hmm. so a lot of that's controlled by robotics. And so they do a lot of science robotics, but uh, you know. One of, the, one of the main things that is probably, if someone wanted to follow their career in anything with NASA, what are one of the main things that they really have to go after in college? I'd say study math and science. Math and science. Focus on your grades mm -hmm. and then when you get into the college, look out for opportunities such as internship programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And NASA does some summer internships, but the other companies have internships as well. So a, a good way to get experience into the workplace is internships. Definitely. So I would keep those grades up and then look for internship opportunities. Because mm -hmm. that's where you get into the door and you get the experience. And then you can figure out, do I like to do this kind of work or not? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's important to find, you know, explore, find things that you like to do. So are you like a, a mentor for the internship or have you been involved with that? Or? I've been involved in some aspects with internship. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you talk to students at career fairs and stuff to give them the information about the internships mm -hmm. as well as when they come on board, I introduce myself and then in some cases I have students that I've worked with that. Uh, you know, because I once was a student myself, yeah. and so it's good to have those mentors, That's and people that you know shepherd sure. you along your way and kind of show you the ins and outs of of what's going on. And you know, if, if you like something, then at least you let them know, and you know they can yeah. find more opportunities on what you like. If you don't like it, then you look for other things to do there, because all kinds of different projects occur at, at NASA. Wow. Now, I would imagine the percentage of native people in this field is very low, is that correct? That's correct. We probably, I think in the agency in our center, you know, it's about a tenth of a percent or wow. so. Wow. Uh, so bad. that's why, you know, yeah, I like to go encourage. out and talk to students and tell them about some of the things that they could do. Because some people, you know, they don't have the, the exposure or vision that's right. that says, oh gee, I, I could really do that, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, when exactly. I was growing up, you know, I, I wanted to be an astronaut. So I was inspired by the launching of the rockets into space and the exploration and our, you know, this is as we're approaching uh, landing on the moon. So I was fascinated by that and, you know, fortunately, you know, I was not told, well, you can't do that. Right, yeah. right. I said, well, why not, you know? Now you had a very unique experience with the Navajo Nation. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, Certainly. Uh, yeah, I really like that story. It was a good story. Yeah. And, when I started working for NASA, I got into the engineering side of it, and uh, you know, my training, my background, my education was all in, in the technology field, engineering, math, and science. Uh, but back in about 1993, 1994 is when I became more aware of my cultural background, mm -hmm. and then continued my career, and at that time also got involved with more uh, American Indian activities. Uh, then I, we formed our Native American Advisory Committee, which is our uh, employee group, and then through that uh, became known in NASA as one of the Native American experts. Because mm -hmm. you know, up to that time, there's a number of us working at NASA, but we never met each other mm -hmm. until we got onto the committee and we established contacts. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. So, no. so back in uh, 99, 98, 99 time frame, NASA launched a probe to go to the moon. It was called the Lunar Prospector. Mm -hmm. And just prior to its launch, uh, a famous scientist had passed away, and his wife, to honor him, had him cremated and put a small portion of his ashes on board the spacecraft. The, the issue came up that after it was launched that the, it became known about these ashes, and uh, the Navajo Nation, uh, the president, uh, wrote a letter to NASA headquarters uh, saying, well, why are you guys doing this to the moon? Why are you desecrating the moon? So. You know, being Native American and then being known in the agency, uh, a number of us were contacted to say, hey, what are we supposed to do? What, how are we supposed to respond to this? Mm -hmm. 
and we ended up writing a letter back to the Navajo Nation opening the door saying, you know, we now understand that, you know, this was an issue, but now we want to open a bridge and establish a communication so that we invite you to have discussions with us to, to talk about this. Well, you know, nothing really came of it, and then uh, about 18 months later, this probe you know, used up all its fuel and was going to crash into the moon, and its mission was over. But during the process of its mission, uh, there was water or signs of water detected. And so they wanted to say, well, you know what? If this thing's going to crash into the moon, why don't we, you know, direct it so it crashes where we think the water's located? It's located either the north or south poles in the craters in the shadows where it doesn't melt. So they said, well, we could change its orbit so we could try to land it in one of the side of the craters. We could kick up enough debris that we could detect that there's water. So they said, well, wait a minute. We had issues before with this mission and the moon, so let's make sure that you know, we established the communications with the Navajo Nation. So a team was formed, and I was asked to be on this team to meet with representatives from the Navajo Nation, and we were helped by representatives from the Lakota Nation. So it all turns out that we set up this meeting where we got this cultural exchange between ourselves, NASA, and uh, native cultures and wisdom of, of star knowledge between the Lakota and the Navajos. So we then had this meeting and basically shared our knowledge and uh, the outcome was that you know there was a ceremony performed at a, at a Sundance that did a healing process so that this person who was going to end up on the moon was healed. So you know from this point forward you know there were some changes made within NASA such as we won't no longer launch remains into space but then we also want to make sure as we plan various missions that we take into account some of the cultural differences and we make sure that what we're doing doesn't necessarily conflict with those mm -hmm. and make sure we have discussions. So I've been involved with other uh, missions along the way where basically said, hey, here Mike, we're gonna do this. Do you see, I see any problem you know, culturally with, with doing something like this? And so we have discussions, we just talk about it with community members, making sure, okay, well, we think it's okay, go for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And another thing is, which is positive, is that a lot of the missions that we get involved with also have outreach activities, meaning that a lot of what's going on with the mission is also uh, transferred into knowledge and, and teaching into the classrooms, mm -hmm. both you know, from elementary on through high school and so forth. So a lot of what we do, there's a teaching aspect to it and a learning aspect to it, which is beneficial to everybody. So we find that very positive. Wow. Well, I know we had more time at the, uh, the event on Saturday and you showed a video and your group actually went to the reservation and it poured, it was raining and you were in a teepee and then you had to move to another location. It was really fascinating. Yes, it was. We're in a place where, you know, typically you're in the desert where it's dry and all of a sudden mm -hmm. we're surrounded by water in various forms. And you know, we're also talking about a mission that's investigating water on a body right. which does not exactly. have an atmosphere and, and is dry. So yeah. we're, it, it's a water theme and a nature theme. Uh -huh. And that when we started our discussions is when this hailstorm right. and the rainstorm came through. And we initially started in this teepee, as you described, and the water started rushing through this the very instant that wow. we started our meeting. <laughs> so we easy. had to go. Yeah. The creator, probably, the creator yeah, said, you guys want water? Here you go. That's right. Yeah, and so right I got all the water you need. <laughs> so there's a theme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's so oh, great. That is yeah. nice. Now, how, um, just through your experience, how difficult was it for NASA to kind of like um, understand the indigenous culture as far as the ceremonies and everything? Were they pretty uh, open-minded or, or did they have to take a little persuading? No, there, there's extreme interest, uh -huh. you know being scientists and engineers and curiosity mm -hmm. that I think all of us in the team that went were intensely interested in the culture. In fact, when we started planning the meetings, you know, those of us from NASA said, you know, it would be great to experience life as it really is living out in the reservation in a hogan out in, in the nature. Mm -hmm. And we talked with our uh, people we're going to meet with in the reservation and they're saying, Gee, wouldn't it be nice to meet in this air-conditioned hotel? <laughs> so, you know, you get this cultural difference, and then, and, and yet, you know, 
every single one of us in the group was fascinated by what we saw and you know, we got to participate briefly in, in part of a Sundance ceremony. Uh, we got to do a sweat lodge, we, just things that many of us had never experienced before, even though some of us would have a, a, the background. How'd, that, how'd you like the sweat lodge? Uh, I, it was an, an awesome experience oh, yeah. and very cleansing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you come crawling out? <laughs> After we're all done. It was pretty hot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty hot. Uh, did they fight, kick up that fire for you guys? It was, yeah, we were in there a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's yeah. good. So now, do you have ongoing communication with the same people on the reservation for future flights then, or is it different groups you, you would be talking to? I've talked to some different groups, but, you know, there are some people at NASA that have continuing uh, work and conversations with the people that we met with and we're involved with. Mm -hmm. You know, they're doing some research comparing uh, some of the cultural star knowledge against what we're discovering mm -hmm. with, with our satellites and the Hubble Space Telescope and so forth. And they're comparing the knowledge gained from the two different sources and trying to match that up. I got a good question for you. Um, the Mayans, the Aztecs, Incas, they have discovered a lot of stars, more than more than NASA, and they have documented all this, all these uh, different planets and stuff. And uh, NASA is barely getting up to Pluto, right? So, but according to the all the other ancient, native indigenous groups, they have already found all these different planets. What do you guys think about that? You know, before this trip, before <clears throat> this experience, you know, I thought, well, oh, gee, NASA's on the cutting edge. Yeah. And after this, it's like one of our facilitators at this meeting said, you know, what one of the things we have to do is educate the educated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, you know, we have a body of knowledge that we're aware of, but we have to realize that there's other knowledge that exists yeah. and that needs to be respected and tapped into. So that, that that's one of the efforts that uh, this other person at NASA was doing, mm -hmm. that, uh, comparing the cultural traditional knowledge, which is vast because it's, you know, clearly it's over thousands and thousands, yeah, and thousands, thousands of thousands years. Of years. Yeah. And then, you know, recently I just came back from a trip vacation to Chaco Canyon. Oh yeah. And so yeah. we talked to the students, you know, about, well, you know, we were engineers too. Mm -hmm. You know, we were scientists and engineers. And if you look at the construction of those buildings, you know, they're aligned with the stars, they're yeah. aligned with the sun, the moon. I mean, for miles and miles, That's they're right. all aligned. And That's it's right. Like, and you could see it from up above. And to do that requires knowledge yes. right. and engineering and astronomy. So, you know, one of the things I like to tell students is that you know, it's in your culture, it's in your background. Mm -hmm. It's in your blood, yeah. In your blood. And, you know, you could be involved in what NASA's doing or you know, high-tech companies are doing, you know, whatever your interests are. You may ha not realize that was your interest, but after being exposed to it, then you, you know, there's no reason why you couldn't just you know, study, keep your grades up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and look for those internship opportunities. I think what they, what they had that was a, a better than what we have right now is the spirituality, because I think modern man right now is they can, you know, build this, build the internet, build all kinds of different things, but they miss, they're missing the spirituality. They're progressing um, knowledge-wise as far as they're not one with nature, yeah, and so te they... technology, but they're not uh, one with nature. They're not, they don't have a duality with with the Mother Earth or anything like that. And that's one thing that I think is going to stop a lot of progression as far as in spirituality right. or progressing as a human being. Because there's some things that we do with technology yeah. mm -hmm. that if we think further in saying there's an impact on our relationship with nature, mm -hmm. that it can be a stronger tool than it is now. Yeah. So yeah, that, that, that's a good point. Yeah. That's right. I really like the approach of having the, um, the Legos for the kids because it's something they could relate to and then once they had to program them, it was frustrating for some of them because it was, they wouldn't go, the cars wouldn't go the right way and so forth. But it's a good way to get their interest, you know, because they were they were packed in there taking turns trying to, you yeah. know, program their little cars. Plus, it, you know, you learn by troubleshooting or, well, it didn't work. Well, why didn't it work? Oh, mm -hmm. this, will, this is why, yeah. you know, you learn by kind of experimenting and, and when th one thing doesn't work, 
you could either give up or say, well, let me think, why didn't that work? So then mm -hmm. you, you try another thing, and then pretty soon you kind of, oh, yeah, okay. So it, it's learning. As a, let me ask you a question about, as a native indigenous man, what message would you have for the youth out there or for your people as far as progressing in, in school or in anything? I think it's important to find mentors to help you. Yeah. We can't do it all on our own, mm -hmm. so we need mentors. And another thing is never give up. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of things that could get in your way, your path of where you're going, and you have to work around them. You have to find other ways. If you can't go straight, turn left. Find another Make way. a different path, but don't give up and find those mentors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not necessarily easy, but, you know, like me, I wanted to work for NASA. So when I got out of college, I applied in nothing because I was one in the thousands of applicants and yeah. they didn't know me. But getting in through as a contractor or as a student, you mm -hmm. kind of get, oh, I know Mike, he's, you know, he does this. So you establish something. Mm -hmm. So my path wasn't directly to NASA, but it ended up in NASA. And that a lot of people have similar <coughs> stories. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people who wanted to be an astronaut, and they failed several times to get into the astronaut program, but they didn't give up, and finally, they're there. Huh? They're there. Wow. So don't give up. Find a mentor. So mm -hmm. which, why message. did you change your course from be wanting to become an astronaut to an astronomer to engineer? engineer How did you <laughs> end up there? <laughs> I've always loved the stars, so astronomy's always been there. So uh -huh. right now it's it's a hobby, uh, but it got me, you know, going. Uh -huh. The astronaut thing, I said, you know, this is kind of dangerous stuff. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call you know, a taxi. I, or I have trouble on roller coasters, so now we're, oh wait a minute. <laughs> but I like working with astronauts, and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so so you you know you find a way. Well, you know, maybe my first intent wasn't. Exactly, you know, so you kind of check things out and as you go through, oh, that looks interesting, let me try that. Uh -huh. But you're all what, part of the team, right? Yeah, yeah so that's, right. that's right. So it feels natural to you. Yeah. A team has many members, yeah. many different skills, right. many different backgrounds, many different knowledges, you know. So we have a lot of different people with different skills that can help the astronauts, help yeah. the space program. You know, one example, at, at the meeting I showed this video, and the person in the video was involved with the Apollo 13. Mm -hmm. And he was an engineer and he studied orbital mechanics. So he understood how to compute orbits. So when mm -hmm. the spacecraft got into trouble, he, he was the member of the team that had to go and figure out, okay, here's, I have to compute their orbit to get them back to Earth safely, which is talk. a high pressure. In a, yeah, he was a young pressure. engineer <laughs> and so, <Wow. laughs> but because he relied on what he learned and, and had some confidence in himself, mm -hmm. he came through. And that's what you need. You need a mentor. You need that confidence, and don't give up. That's that's important. It's almost like a tree, right? You got to make mm -hmm. sure every, the, you got a good foundation, and that's just right. keep feeding it and feeding it. That's right. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Well, you're a wonderful role model for the oh, kids, exactly. and especially for all of us, actually, for your nation, <laughs> for all indigenous people. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. So we appreciate um, all the work you're doing in the community, and looking forward to next year's. Uh, technology journey because I think that's a wonderful way to get the kids involved. And yeah, and actually, and there were other, there were like um, college recruiters out there oh, yeah. and so forth, and oh, yeah. Native Voice TV was out there. So. so yeah, so if anyone's interested in becoming uh, or getting into NASA or even trying to find some kind of avenue of mentorship next year, you could talk to this gentleman. Yeah, come to the yes. um, technology journey. But uh, do well in school. Math. Study, do your math, <laughs> do your science, and that's the Calculus, start. Calculus, trigonometry, right. everything. <laughs> and then, you know, if we have, uh, if, as students, they go into college and stuff, there's organizations, and one of the organizations that I'm familiar with is, is ACES, the American ACES. Indian oh, right. Science and oh, Engineering Society. Yeah. And I'm also a member of the professional chapter for California, and I'm currently the president of that organization. So that's another mentorship tool right. is to look at ACES. They can help with some scholarships, it can help with some guidance and advice. And so, you know, keep your eyes open. That's, that's 
Great. That's what my It's a good advice. message. Thank yeah. you yeah. so much for joining us Appreciate today. It. Thank you. And there's something coming up real soon, and that's the second annual Bay Area Indigenous Cultural Expo. Yes, and that's going to be Saturday, December 2nd. And that's from 6 a.m. sunrise ceremony, to, and then the other vendors are going to start at 9. There's workshops and uh, speakers and dancers and all kinds of activities. It's going to be a concert. A lot of things for sale. Yeah. Come out there, do your Christmas shopping. It will be held at the Moxa Youth Center, as it says on the screen there, Sinclair Drive. Come by uh, both days or one of the two days and uh, do your Christmas shopping. Oh, this would be yeah. a perfect opportunity to go over there and get some nice indigenous nice things, jewelry yeah. and stuff like that. There'll be some great speakers. Oh, and yeah. Very good entertainment. Music. If you want to just kick back and listen to the music, it's mm -hmm. fine. Have a great time. So that's the second annual. Join them on uh, the uh, second and third. Yeah, Saturday two days. And Sunday. Right? Are we going to be there? No. Of course we'll be there. We're going to do <laughs> we'll our be. Christmas shopping. Right? Yeah, we're going to do some Christmas shopping. I thought yeah. we were going to do like a. Well, I guess everyone will be going out to Alcatraz um, Thursday for the un Thanksgiving, early, yes. bright and early in the morning, and uh, enjoy your families with yeah. your gatherings. Remember the true meaning of un Thanksgiving. Right, yeah. right. And you can be a sponsor of Native Voice TV. We're on every Sunday at 6 o'clock, Channel 15. Yep, and we're at San Jose and Campbell, so. So, thank you for joining us. I appreciate and it. we'll see you next week. Good night. All right, thank you. Children's eyes.